If you're curious as to why the Lord chose to use such a huge number for the debt, it's because He wants us to understand just how serious our sin is in His eyes. It's not a little thing. Welcome to the Parable Podcast. Thanks for joining Family Life on air host Randy Snavely as he digs into the story lessons taught by the world's greatest teacher, Jesus. In this episode, it's part one of Don't Bite Back, taken from chapter 18 of the Gospel of Matthew. Perhaps you've heard the story about the man who was bitten by a dog, which was later discovered to be rabid. The man was rushed to the hospital, where tests revealed that he had, in fact, contracted rabies. At the time, medical science had no cure for the disease, and his doctor had the difficult task of telling the man his condition was incurable and terminal. Sir, we will do all we can to make you comfortable, but I cannot give you false hope. There is nothing we can really do. My best advice is that you put your affairs in order as soon as possible. Well, the dying man sat back in shock, but finally rallied enough strength to ask for a pen and some paper. He then began writing and was still writing vigorously when the doctor returned. I'm glad to see you're working on your will. Oh, this ain't no will, Doc. This is a list of people I'm going to bite before I die. Well, we chuckle at the story, but many of us have our list. If it's not written down somewhere, it's in our minds. It's a list of people who have wronged us, a list of people who have mistreated us or hurt us. C.S. Lewis said, forgiveness is a beautiful word until you have something you have to forgive. What is it that's inside of us that makes us want to get even with someone who has bitten us? Why do we want revenge? What is that powerful urge that makes us want to bite back? Well, the fact that we have a strong urge to get even is a big reason why Jesus addresses forgiveness often. He not only talked about it, he lived it. Matthew eighteen twenty one through 35 is perhaps his most important statement about forgiveness, and it's in the form of a parable. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will repay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him one hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Jesus has just finished talking about one Christian forgiving another Christian right before he gets into the parable. He then begins the parable with the word, therefore. That word connects what was just said with what is about to be said. The point of this story, 
It's about followers of Christ who need to understand the importance of forgiveness. Now, I like to call Peter the mouth of the disciples. He's the one who always seems to speak up, and a lot of times his mouth gets him in trouble. But then there are other instances when his talking reveals a man of real insight, and I think this is one of those times. Peter knows that according to Jewish tradition, an offender could and should be forgiven up to three times. But beyond that, the offender would be facing some serious backlash. So I am certain that Peter thought he was being overly generous when he suggested forgiving someone up to seven times. However, Jesus shocks them all when he replies, you need to forgive 77 times, or some translations say 70 times seven. If a Christian brother comes and asks for forgiveness after repenting from a wrongdoing, you need to keep forgiving him as often as is necessary. Forgiveness must be without limits. The disciple of the Lord is to overflow with forgiveness. Eugene Peterson's The Message paraphrases 1 Corinthians 13:5 this way, Love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. You are listening to Family Life's The Parable Podcast, Don't Bite Back, Part 1. It's taken from Matthew's Gospel, Chapter 18, Verses 21 through 35. Jesus tells the parable that I have called Don't Bite Back as if it's a three act play. Act 1, a king forgives one of his servants of an astronomical debt he owes. Act 2, that same servant refuses to forgive a fellow servant of a much smaller debt. And in Act 3, the king takes back the forgiveness from the first servant who refused to extend forgiveness to the second one. For whatever reason, a king has decided to take inventory of his books and in the process discovers one of his many servants has been ripping him off. He owes the king a lot of money, 10,000 talents. In today's terms, it was a debt running in the billions of dollars. Now, the king in this story represents God and the servant represents you and me. If you're curious as to why the Lord chose to use such a huge number for the debt, it's because he wants us to understand just how serious our sin is in his eyes. It's not a little thing. My sin has put me so far into debt to a holy and a perfect God, there is no way humanly possible I could ever repay it. The servant in this first scene begs for extra time and patience so he can earn the wages to pay the king back. And I kind of chuckled to myself, talk about being blind to his predicament. He can work for a thousand years and never make enough money to settle the debt. But something no one listening to this story thought would ever happen did. The king, motivated by love and compassion, forgave the debt the whole thing. Pastor Gary Enrig says, it is the character of the king, not the character of the servant that produces the release from debt. The reason for forgiveness is found in the forgiver, not the forgiven. It is an act of grace. Enrig goes on to say, the nature of forgiveness is release from debt by the payment of a price. All that money belongs to the king, but he gives up the right to it, so the forgiver pays what the forgiven owes. One bitterly cold night in January of 1935, New York City Mayor Fiorello LaGuardia turned up at a night court that served the poorest ward of the city. LaGuardia dismissed the judge for the evening and took over the bench himself. Within a few minutes, a tattered old woman was brought before him, charged with stealing a loaf of bread. She told LaGuardia that her daughter's husband had deserted her, her daughter was sick, and her two grandchildren were starving. But the shopkeeper from whom the bread was stolen 
refused to drop the charges. It's a real bad neighborhood, your honor, the man told the mayor. She's got to be punished to teach other people around here a lesson. LaGuardia sighed. He turned to the woman and said, I've got to punish you. The law makes no exceptions. Ten dollars or ten days in jail. But even as that gavel came down and he pronounced sentence, the mayor was reaching into his pocket with his other hand, and he pulled out a $10 bill. Here is the $10 fine, which I now remit. Only the judge, or in this parable, only the king can forgive the debt, and he forgives it by paying it himself. That's the gospel in a nutshell. The sin debt that you and I owe God the Father is paid for by God the Son, Jesus, when he died on the cross. Verse 27 says the king did two things for the debt owing servant. He released him and forgave the debt. That's grace and mercy. The king both held back the deserved punishment and gave favor the servant. This has been the Parable Podcast with Randy Snavely. Click the subscribe button so you'll know when new episodes are released. And be sure to check out Family Life's other original podcasts, including If That Makes Sense, Business by the Book, and Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim. Family Life is a listener-supported ministry. Your partnership makes podcasts like this possible. Find out more at familylife.org.